good morning and welcome to my channel. You know what I'm doing? That's right, I'm putting the gloves on. Like my hands soft and gentle. No. But I do. So, gloves on, an important cut of tea. That's been a while, hasn't it? Right. Someone recently asked me, Mark, he said, I can't see many 4T mopeds on your channel. I do a lot of 2T, and they're rebuild and so on. And he's right, there isn't. There's about five, I guess. This will be number six. We're looking today at Lex Moto FMR 50cc. And yes, it is a 4T. Now, it's got a few battle scars. They all tend to. 2016 50cc 4T. It will do 70 odd miles to the gallon. These are heavily, heavily restricted. All right. I do occasionally get asked, can I put a race CDI in it? If I change the rollers, variators, exhaust, bloody bloody. It's just not worth it. New, I've looked between, well, about 1,500 pounds, 17, so on. It's been around for a couple of years now here in England. It's probably got another name of QW, QT, 50, whatever it's going to be. But here, they've badged this one up, Lexmoto have, as the FMR 50. Um, nice and easy controls. And I mean, they're all going to be the same, aren't they? So you've got your fuel gauge, turning, speedo, which obviously is in kilometres, 6,700, 4,000 odd miles, high beam, other turning signal, and a little sort of pulsy thing. Mm. Battery should be in there. And as you know, I always say it, just stick the damn thing on charge. No matter what, get yourself one of these, give it a good old charge. Now the lad that had this said, um, it don't electric start, um, and uh, it kick starts, but it's a little bit slow. So I immediately noticed telltale sign. Telltale sign. You know what I'm getting to, didn't you? And there was the exhaust. And of course, this panel here. So I knew this has been down the road. Very lightly, but it has been down the road. Now I'm going to tart all that up. That's why I'm not showing you yet. I want to show you after I tart it up. A few little sprays here, an occasional sticker, but plug, oil filter. Clean the air filter out, may have to change that, 4,000 odd miles on it. So, one brand new, itty bitty, itty bitty, brand new plug. I cannot stress, honestly, I can't stress as much more than this to say, keep an eye on your oil. It is the blood of your little bike, okay? Two T's different, but four T's, check your oil regularly. If you've had it a little while and you know you're checking it fortnightly, it's not moving at all, then check it monthly, but you must keep an eye on it. All these will burn a little bit of oil. And what's going to knacker these bikes, the quickest you can do, is you're going to run out of oil and it will seize. And then just throw away. These little GY6 engines, just throw them away. It's not worth messing around with them. Cheap enough, but you need to keep an eye on that oil. Normal 1040 motorbike oil, perfect. It hasn't got the clutch. Remember, it's a variator system, but you must do that. As for the plug, T. As for the plug, you're going to notice you start needing it because you'll take longer to start and you, you get this sort of bogging down when you're going to pull away. It's this little bugger here. It's just coughed up. And the air filter, I say, we'll have a look at that in a minute. I haven't got a replacement air filter, so I'm hoping I might be able to take that one out and give it a little clean. If not, I will have to buy another one. Variator, rollers, and belt. The whole system. Got lots of videos on that. 42T, they are identical. Difference is that you can obviously de-restrict the other ones. These ones you can't because they're made that way. And that's always in the same place. Belts do go, but not that quickly. 4,000 miles should be fine with it. Worth a check if you just bought it, definitely. Rollers, doesn't matter what weight you go, they're still gonna pull away the same. Now, plug is easy on these. On some of them, you sometimes have to take seat bucket out. This one will be in here somewhere. We'll take a look in a minute. I'll bring the bike over and we will change the plug together. Air filter is in the same place every time, so easy to find. Spark plug can be a little bit bugger sometimes, it can be underneath, it can be at the side, it can be here, but this one is on the right hand side. Again, easy to locate, just a few seconds really to look for or watch my videos. Airbox, nice and easy. It's only a Phillips head, take it off, give it a look. So easy to do. Inline filter, that's lovely and clean. I'm not gonna change that. Now normally the carburetors difficult to get to as it were take the bucket out 
But here's one I made earlier. <laughs> it came with it for some reason. It's not often you get to see a 4T carburetor. A little floaty bit in there. Obviously the vacuum on top. Auto choke. Done a video on this. And I had to test them now as well. Positive, negative to battery and that will slowly come out. So again, could be a problem with this little bugger. Because it's slow starting and it won't pull away. But I still think that's going to be a quick service. Let's get cracking. Battery's on charge. This needs doing. Let's show you the plug. So, simple plug spanner. Let's have a look. He did say to me, <coughs> it made me laugh. I see what he did. This should have a centre stand. All bikes have a centre stand, not necessarily a side stand. This one hasn't got it, and I think that's where it came over. However, he said electric start doesn't work. But he had the side stand down. Now, if you watch my other video, it's a little red bike. The centre stand connector was broke. So, of course, electric start wouldn't work. Put the side stand up, thing fires up lovely. There's nothing wrong with it. He just didn't know. He needed a centre stand, not the side stand down. Because I have a kill switch. I can disconnect that, but no sense, really. So hopefully in there you can just about see that I mustn't knock the bike over because it's not got a centre stand. <laughs> they do a little bit of a wiggle out, there you go. And then that will just simply pop in there like that. And you get it out. And there we go. One very, very filthy little plug. Again, I'm so sorry for the little smudge. It seems to rub out my face, which is not a bad thing. Obviously, I dropped the camera. 250 pound camera, and I dropped it on the lens. Tiny little scratch, so when you get close up, yeah, you can see me. Here's two plugs. Definitely is changing. Obviously, when you get distance, my face gets a bit blurred. So I apologize, it's something I've got to look into, but 250 pound for another camera, identical, just pees me off. I want to see if I can get some of that scratch stuff on the uh, front of it. Anyway, there's the plug, nice and simple. Same make, and do always check that you've got the same plug, okay? With the numbers on there, that's different heats. So you can go up or down sometimes, it's not the biggest difference, but you have to make sure the first number's are the same, and it's not too long, it will spank the piston and lots of scary stuff. Anyway, simply let's get that back in. Do not over tighten, but just make sure it's, it's in there, okay? Make sure you squeeze that back on there. That's it. Plug done. Now, oil checking. I've shown you so many times. Black, dirty. Easy to check though. Now, that's all we can do on this side of the bike. That's it. Other side now, air filter on oil. As I said, a few little screws. That pops off. Give that a wipe out of a rag. And look, it's a simple sponge filter. Why buy another one? You can wash that in wash that liquid. A little tiny bit of oil, it's not like 2T. Give the box a wipe out, job done there. But make sure before you put it back, it is completely dry, okay? You're just gonna suck some moisture in otherwise. And the oil is here. It's just a 17 mil, and it's simple enough just to come out. Obviously I've undone it already. And you just undo it. And out comes the uh, rubbishy old oil. Let all that. It should be black, don't panic. Let's get all that oil out of there. Don't even think it takes a litre, but that's what we're gonna have a look in a minute and then fill it back up with lovely fresh oil. This bike will run more than happy. You know, a minute ago I pointed to the screw. Oh, it's falling. There it is, so it's just not in the other one. Obviously someone had taken it out. Anyway, tip the bike over, let all that drain out, get some fresh in there. And there we go, that will nicely drain out. Often you replace this little one here, this little washer here. But to be honest with you, first service, it looks very good. I'm just going to put the same one back in. There's no damage there. That was so, so simple. All washed. Back in there again. Clean up with a little bit of rag. Clean the box out as well. Got to have a wash yet. Oil choice. It's down to you. Motul, I mean, this is what I've got for this. only takes a litre. 1040. Okay, don't use car one, all right? They are formulated ever slightly different, and yes, you pay a little bit more for these ones, but you want them to last, don't you? Does it really matter on a cheap little bike? Well, it's down to you, you know? I've used all the car oil and some of the 125s I've had before, but lately I've been sticking to this. Don't worry about how dirty this oil is. Do you know, that's what it's there for. Now I'm gonna drain it back into, here's one I used earlier, 
and I'm going to look at the bottom and see if there's any little black bits and bobs in there that you may have to worry about. Personally, that's what it's there for, to collect it all and stick it at the bottom. Nice and simple, just top it up with a litre. And now for an important environmental information update. Your old Puyol put back in a container you used in the first place and dispose of it sensibly. No, seriously, go down the dump and they've got them big vats in. Put it in there, don't dump it in the bin or nothing. I have to say that, but I do that myself. Always makes sense. Anyway, one litre of old oil, filling up with new oil. And there we have it. All clean and tidy. Lexmoto FMR. 50cc, 30 miles an hour, million miles to the gallon. Good, really good lights on this, actually, on the front, I must admit. Little 120 70 by 12 little front tyres on this, and is that the same on the back? Here in Britain, the tyres don't have to show the 1.6 legal limit as long as it's visible tread, which these have. I'll take that off, innit? Little cracks, I did say it had them on there. But with these little bikes, they have yearly owners. You know, 16, they move on to the next bike. This has got two owners. Cheap, easy. As I said, Earl's all done now. She starts, she rides, she runs, does 30 miles an hour. Just a few little bits to touch up on now. No centre stands, I said, only a side stand on this one. I don't know why I took it off, maybe it's damaged, it broke, who knows. Hope you enjoyed that, number 4T1. Just really a service. There's a few little scratches here and there on these, but you've got to expect on these little bikes. Thanks for watching, take care of yourselves on the road, please like, share and subscribe.